It is an article of faith in liberal democratic circles that the Republican Party and the American right is a cult. A cult of personality in which reverence for Donald Trump is required, no dissent from party orthodoxy is permitted, and everyone mindlessly and obediently falls into line behind their leaders whenever they're told, doing whatever they're told, without questioning any of it. That's because American liberals are sophisticated. They're well-educated and erudite, very rational. So they know how to think for themselves. They love to flatter themselves by reciting the 1930s Will Rogers quote, quote, I don't belong to any organized political party. I'm a Democrat. They're just too thoughtful, too intellectually feisty to be controlled. They're guided by science and the values of the Enlightenment. They're profoundly individualistic and can't be herded or controlled. But conservatives, they're primitive. They barely have functioning brains. That's why they go to two-year community college programs and learn how to fix cars and plumbing and sell boats. They're simple-minded, even religious. They love and worship authority, so they just do whatever they're told. That's why they all think and act alike. Now, all of this probably comes as a huge surprise to Congressman Kevin McCarthy. The California Republican was the second highest ranking member of the House Republican Caucus behind then speakers John Boehner and then Paul Ryan. When Ryan retired in 2018, McCarthy succeeded him as the Republican leader, though at that point the Republicans were in the minority, so McCarthy became House Republican Minority Leader while Nancy Pelosi seized the gavel as House Speaker. But now, with the Republicans having won back the majority in the House in last last November's election, McCarthy is the obvious choice to become Speaker of the House. After all, he was already the Republican leader, and thus next in line. That's how things normally work in Washington. Nancy Pelosi spent years as leader of the House Democratic Caucus in the minority, then twice waltzed into the Speakership with only token opposition. But not only is McCarthy's path to the Speakership choppy, It's genuinely in peril. The vote is scheduled for midday tomorrow. To be elected Speaker, McCarthy needs 218 votes. Obviously, they all need to be Republican votes since no Democrat will vote for him. Because Republicans formed more poorly than expected in the last election, they only have 222 Republican members against 212 Democrats. So McCarthy cannot afford many defections and still expect to win. And yet... As the Wall Street Journal reported just this morning, quote, about two dozen Republican members haven't said how they would vote and five are firmly against Mr. McCarthy. To secure the votes he needs, McCarthy has spent the last several weeks, really the last several months, horse, horse trading and making all kinds of concessions. That's how politics ought to work. The average member of Congress, as opposed to party leaders, only rarely have real power. Essentially, every House Republican member who could pose a credible threat to withhold their vote from McCarthy has real bargaining power. Knowing that McCarthy desperately needs their votes in order to achieve his lifelong dream of becoming Speaker of the House, many of them, rather than just meekly and obediently falling into line and doing what they're told, have instead been leveraging that power to extract power for themselves. McCarthy's opposition within his own caucus is largely composed of anti-establishment populists such as Congressman Matt Gates of Florida, whose opposition stems from distrust that McCarthy is more swamp creature than anti-establishment populist. It thus may come as a surprise to many to learn that Georgia's Marjorie Taylor Greene, the purest and, in my view, most organic MAGA populist in the Congress, is now a steadfast supporter of McCarthy and has been for months. That is not because Congresswoman Green suddenly became a compliant soldier eager to appease Washington's power players or do what she's told. That is not her at all. To the contrary, it's because she forced McCarthy to accept and then publicly acknowledge the reality that among the Republican voting base, she is clearly one of the most influential, trusted, and respected members of Congress. Arguably, after Donald Trump himself, there is no politician who holds more sway with the still large and vibrant group of Trump voters on whom the Republican Party still relies. You may recall that Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats created a brand new precedent by stripping Green of all committee assignments, not due to any behavioral infractions or ethical violations, but because of their distaste for some of her statements prior to being elected to Congress. As is true of Pelosi's equally precedent-breaking decision to reject McCarthy's nominee for the January 6th committee, because she wanted the appearance of bipartisanship without the annoyance of actual disagreement, 
and thus herself put the easy to manipulate Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger on the committee as her Republican pets. McCarthy, in order to secure these outstanding votes, agreed to those precedent-breaking moves by Pelosi, to use those precedent-breaking moves by Pelosi to remove both Adam Schiff and Eric Swalwell from their purchase on the House Intelligence Committee. In Swalwell's case, because he got caught having an affair with a Chinese spy, and in Schiff's, because he's a pathological liar whose compulsive deceit is quite plausibly inconsistent with his ostensible role in overseeing the CIA and other agencies of the intelligence community to ensure integrity and transparency. As a side note, note that all those liberal academics and historians and journalists who drape themselves in an endless array of sanctimonious lectures during the Trump era about the sacred value of normalcy, this is not normal, they tweeted virtually every day during the Trump presidency. They had nothing to say when Pelosi broke with centuries of tradition in these house maneuvers other than to clap and giggle in approval. But back to Margie Taylor Greene. Months ago, she secured a promise from McCarthy to restore her to her committee assignments, and not just any committee assignments, but the ones that are among the most powerful and coveted and important in the House, including the House Oversight Committee, that will allow her to dig deep into all sorts of scandals, from the coercion from Democrats and the FBI to pressure big tech, to censor whatever information they do not want the American people to see, to how it is that a large group of former in intelligence officials induced most corporate media outlets to ratify an outright lie that the Hunter Biden laptop was, quote, Russian disinformation, and then induced Twitter and Facebook to suppress that story in the days right before the 2020 election, all based on that lie. As Market Watch reports, such a committee assignment would enable Green to use congressional subpoena power to unearth a wide range of other scandals as well. Quote, the Oversight Committee would likely play a key role in a Republican-led House. As McCarthy told CNN, his party views oversight as a key priority, including potential probes of the withdrawal from Afghanistan, the origins of the COVID-19 pandemic, and how the Biden administration has handled parents and school board meetings. So that's what it means to wield power for real against party leadership. That's what it means to refuse to do what one is told. That's what it means to recognize that there are very sharp, vibrant, and passionate debates within your own party about the party's core values and agenda and to do whatever you can to ensure that your vision prevails, not by solely fighting against the other party. That's easy, but also against your own party's leadership, its funding base, and its power structure. That doesn't really sound like a cult to me. Nor does this. The most watched cable host in the country. Thanks for watching this clip from System Update. Catch our full shows for free live weekdays at 7 p.m. Eastern on Rumble and join our Locals community at greenwall.locals.com for all of my written journalism, exclusive after show Q&As, and more.